Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Johari and I'm a registered social worker based here in Toronto. It is early September 2020. This is the eighth video of my relationship series and in this video I'm going to talk about adult attachment. So as a couples counselor specializing in premarital counseling, I love to talk about different resources and tools. So in previous weeks in this relationship series of videos, I spoke about communication, conflict resolution, keeping the intimacy alive, the five love languages, what boundaries are, personal boundaries and boundaries with in-laws, and also boundaries with marriage. Clearly I like the boundary section, so that was um, a series of three different videos just on boundaries by itself. Um, please feel free to check out those videos if you haven't already. And in the upcoming weeks I will be covering how to manage the inevitable struggles in your relationship and also personality differences. I, I believe I'll also do an, another segment on attachment just more so focused on one of the books that I'll, I'll refer to in a moment. Um, so let's dive into attachment in relation to romantic relationships. So we're all meant to be in connection with other people. We're designed to depend on each other with a sense of community, camaraderie, support, and our most important relationship with another human being as adults is our romantic partner. So can I asking these kind of questions. Can I count on you emotionally when I really need you the most? Will you be there for me when it really matters? Am I reassured in your comfort? And if yes, then you have a secure sense of connection and attachment. So attachment research, just kind of going back, attachment research has been around since John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So Ainsworth developed this strange situation test where she found that infants had three main attachment styles, secure, insecure avoidant, and insecure ambivalent or insecure resistant. So that one's kind of broken down into two by itself, insecure, ambivalent, and insecure, resistant. So Bowlby has said that attachment plays a role in life from cradle to grave. The importance of that bond does not just end in childhood then. So it continues on through as we grow up and get into romantic relationships. So my focus in this vlog is specifically on adult attachment. So there's a lot of current literature on adult attachment and that draws on these decades of attachment research, which is great. You know, it's very reliable and trustworthy information. So I love the work of Sue Johnson, <clears throat> Susan Johnson. She developed the emotionally focused therapy technique um, or therapeutic model. So you can find these books by her. Um, Hold Me Tight is probably the more, most popular one that was the original one that she had written on, on adult attachment and, and having those conversations to figure out what's going on in the, in the relationship, what's the cycle or the dance that is going on for the couple and understanding that from an attachment perspective. So um, she also wrote <clears throat> Love Sense, um, which is more uh, the newer, the newer um, book that she she has written, and um, in this, the hold me tight is a little bit goes into a little bit more of the theory, and this love sense is a little bit more of the practical, and and then there's also um, creative for connection that she wrote. Um, with Kenneth Sanderfer and it's basically like hold me tight but for Christian couples so it's specifically written for Christian couples so this is the one <clears throat> that I'm going to be sorry 
this is the one that I'm going to be doing a whole separate vlog on. So keep an eye open for that in the in the coming next few weeks. Um, so I use this emotionally focused therapy approach with my couples all the time. So it's helpful to be able to understand that negative cycle or dance that they find themselves in and learn how to change the music to it, change the music and shift their dance into a more positive cycle and understand what their own needs and vulnerabilities are, what their partner's needs and vulnerabilities are, how they're triggering each other and how to step out of that negative cycle and change the dance to step into a more positive cycle with each other. One where there's, there's understanding and empathy and, and connection. So, um, so I really like that approach, and um, and like I said, I use it with my couples uh, when I when I work with my couples quite a bit. So the other resource that I really like in terms of adult attachment is Levine and Heller's book called Attached: The New Science of Adult Attachment and How It Can Help You Find and Keep Love. So in their book, they have a questionnaire that you can take. Um, to determine what your attachment style is and you can also find it on their website um, I'll put the link right here below and on this site you can decipher what your own attachment style is what your partner's attachment style is and that will give you a better understanding of where the other person might be coming from and explain maybe some of the behaviors that you're seeing um, so coming at the dynamic from an attachment perspective helps you to, to understand kind of the, the deeper meaning behind some of the, the actions or behaviors. So I also like, here's another resource about adult attachment. So I also like um, this attachment workbook. So it's by Annie Chen and it's called um, the Attachment Theory Workbook powerful tools to promote understanding, increase stability, and build lasting relationships. So it has some great tools for reflection on each attachment style and a chapter also at the end on understanding the dynamics between the dynamics and the interactions between the different various attachment style combinations in a couple. So I think that's a great a great resource. So what are the different attachment styles? So the books that I mentioned focus on, on three, secure, anxious, and avoidant. Um, so anxious attachment can also sometimes be called preoccupied attachment. And then avoidant can include either dismissing avoidant or fearful avoidant. So I'll go through what those mean now. So for the securely attached person, they tend to have a high level of emotional intelligence. So they can be very open and honest, readily available and, and able to connect with their partner and build, build that sense of intimacy very easily. So if their partner is upset, they're easily able to comfort them. They have that ability within themselves to be able to comfort them. And, um, and if they themselves are upset, then, then they can easily accept comfort from their partner. So, and, and, and that works for them. To receive that comfort, they're able to accept it and receive it well. So they generally know that their partner is there for them, they trust them, they're comforted by them, and, um, and they know that other people, including their partner, are there for them when they need them. So for the anxiously attached person, they might feel insecure and have a low sense of self-worth. Um, they tend to romanticize love rather than basing it on reality. Um, they may be, they could demonstrate some, some um, behaviors that, that can come off as very needy, needy, demanding, jealous, or controlling. And they may fear abandonment and be very apologetic. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to ask this, or I'm so sorry for this or that or the other. So they're, they're very apologetic, um, tend to be. And their love tank never seems to be, I know a few weeks ago I had spoken about Gary Chapman's five love languages. And so he refers to the love tank. 
So in terms of attachment, um, for the anxiously attached person, um, their love tank is never quite full. No matter how much love that you show them, no matter how much affection or reassurance that you give them, their love tank never seems to quite be full. Um, so, so for them, it's it's never. It doesn't matter how much love is or reassurance or affection is given to them. It just doesn't seem like it's ever enough. Um, so they are hungry for that connection and they have a lot of love to give. They're able to readily give it, but they can never seem to get enough or they might feel that they're not worthy of love. So they might think, for example, that if their partner doesn't call them back right away, it means that their partner doesn't love them. So kind of jumping to those conclusions of X means Y they're doing this so it means they don't love me they're doing this so I'm not worthy of love um, so so that's the anxiously attached person so for the avoidant dismissing attached person they might see others as unavailable or unreliable and so they're more reliant on themselves so it's hard for them to share with others or comfort others when they're in distress and it's 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 hard to, to seek out that comfort and to receive that comfort. So they might be emotionally distant and avoid true intimacy. They shy away from vulnerability and detach themselves easily with others. Um, so even though they might really care, they pretend that they don't care. Um, if their partner, for example, is saying that they don't want to be with them or, or maybe need some time or, um, need some space and they, they'll pretend like they don't care okay whatever that's fine but inside they're they're dying like it's really hard for them to um, to to have that rejection so um, so they'll they'll tend to avoid it and dismiss it I'm not getting that love and I don't care they'll pretend that they don't care um, but inside they're dying they're they're highly anxious inside um, but they dismiss they dismiss that intimacy pretending like they don't really care about it so for the avoidant fearful attached person they also see others as unavailable or unreliable just like the avoidant dismissing person but for the avoidant fearful person they still have that desire for closeness they still want that closeness so they might feel that others will hurt them but they still want to try they struggle with that internal conflict of they want intimacy but they also resist it they they fear that closeness but they also fear distance or abandonment so they might cling to their partner when they feel rejected but then feel trapped if they get too close so they can get overly, they can get easily overwhelmed by all these emotions and reactions and their mood can sometimes be unpredictable. So those are the four different styles of attachment, um, technically three, but, but the last one is divided into two. So, um, so there's securely attached, anxiously attached, avoidant dismissing, and then the other avoidant, avoidant fearful. Um, so those are the, the different styles of attachment in terms of um, adult attachment. So just because you might have grown up with a certain attachment style with your caregivers does not necessarily mean that you'll continue to have that same attachment style through into adulthood. So it can change depending on who you're with. It can change even with the same partner depending on the circumstances and situation. So for example, a securely attached person who they they had that secure attachment growing up as a child, um, they knew that they could rely on their parents, they knew that they can rely on other people, they view the world as a safe place. So that securely attached person into adulthood, if they're in a relationship, they may become fearful avoidant, for example, if their partner has cheated on them, let's say. So if there's been something to instigate that 
that fear and that that dread and 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 that um, that that insecurity has has come through of of questioning. Oh my gosh, can I can I even count on you? Who are you? And then doubt, having all these doubts. So um, so a securely attached person might then feel that they are fearful, avoidant if their partner has cheated on them, for example. So it can change, that attachment style can change depending on the person, depending on the dynamics, depending on the context, depending on the situation. So so it can depend, it can change and shift over time. So just because you're one one style doesn't mean that you're that style forever and ever, amen. Um, so, so it really depends on, on the dynamics. So, and likewise, an anxiously attached person, so someone who had that anxious, anxious attachment um, growing up, they might have find that sense of security and comfort and belonging with their romantic partner. So someone who might typically feel that, that anxious attachment might feel comforted and soothed in, in a secure and loving relationship. So they might, they might then develop into having this secure style of attachment in this context of this relationship uh, because they know, yes, I can count on this person. Yes, this person is there for me. Yes, this is my other, my other, um, my, my other part, part of my other person, my other part of me. So, um, so they, they can develop that, that sense of security there in that, in that kind of relationship. So your attachment style might be different with different people and then depending on the dynamics of the relationship. So in summary, check out the tools to figure out um, on the, the attached website or in one of these books to figure out what your attachment style is and what your um, partner's style is. And it may help you to better understand where your partner is coming from. It might explain some of the behaviors. It might also help you ideally build more empathy for each other and with each other. And so working together towards that that trust and emotional safety so that you can both feel that sense of reassurance and security and and reliability and that you're you're there for each other when you need each other the most so this will develop over time and with these little demonstrations of of trust of following through of comfort of gentleness when it's needed so so those those um, moments or those opportunities to build those trust help to increase that level of sense of security in the relationship so I hope that was helpful in the next video excuse me I'll be talking about um, that book created for connection so I will focus more on this one in the next video um, so hope Hope that you um, keep an eye open for that. And um, and so thank you so much for watching. And if you have any other requests for other videos or um, or any any other questions at all on personal wellness or relationships, feel free to email me directly. My email can be found on my website. So feel free to like or follow, subscribe or retweet or share, depending on what platform you're seeing this on. And just be aware of confidentiality risks, given that this is a public platform. So God bless and be well. Thank you.